Venous thromboembolism, or VTE, is a leading cause of maternal morbidity and mortality in the United States. The postpartum period is one of the highest risk times for women to develop a VTE. This risk is further increased following any kind of surgery or immobilization. For these reasons, women who have recently had a cesarean delivery are especially at risk of developing a VTE. Chemoprophylaxis, or the use of medications to prevent a VTE event, is well known to prevent a VTE episode in women with a history of prior VTE. In addition, it has been well proven effective in lowering the risk of VTE in women undergoing surgery. However, less is known of its effectiveness for women with no history of VTE undergoing cesarean delivery. Recommendations for postpartum chemoprophylaxis use with low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin come from extrapolation of non-pregnancy related data and expert opinion. With no evidence-based practice guideline available, many institutions have implemented their own risk-based protocol to identify women at increased risk of a VTE postpartum. The objective of this study was to evaluate the impact of implementing a VTE chemoprophylaxis protocol for women after cesarean delivery on rate of chemoprophylaxis, VTE episodes, and wound complications. We performed a retrospective cohort study in women who delivered via cesarean delivery from 2016 to 2019 at a single tertiary center before and after implementation of a VTE prevention protocol in January of 2017. This protocol outlined clinical risk factors consistent with those from the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists guidelines. Women classified as high risk for VTE qualified for chemical prophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin initiated on postoperative day one and continued until they were discharged. An electronic order set was created to increase compliance with this. The primary outcome was rate of chemoprophylaxis use. Secondary outcomes included VTE episodes and wound complications. Demographics, chemoprophylaxis use, and outcomes were compared year to year post implementation using chi squared test for trend. The trajectory slope of primary outcome was estimated in logistic regression and compared pre and post protocol implementation. Now on to our results. 4,239 women undergoing cesarean delivery were included. Baseline characteristics were similar between pre and post implementation groups, except for higher rates of hypertensive disease in the pre-protocol group as seen in the table. Yearly post-protocol rates of chemoprophylaxis use increased significantly with each year of implementation. At 11.9% in 2017, 19.7% in 2018, 24% in 2019, with a trend p-value of less than 0.001, as seen in the figure. Similarly, there was significantly greater trajectory slope of chemoprophylaxis use after protocol implementation versus before. There was no change in wound complications. There were no cases of VTE pre-protocol and two cases post-protocol. Interestingly, the two women with VTE episodes post-protocol did qualify for chemoprophylaxis by the protocol but did not receive it. In conclusion, a VTE prevention protocol for women undergoing cesarean delivery significantly increased chemoprophylaxis use in high-risk women without increasing cesarean wound complications. VTE events occurred in women who qualified for but did not receive prophylaxis, indicating incomplete acceptance of an adopted guideline despite an electronic order set. Thank you.